This video introduces the last couple of characters who are important for the story in Chapter 2, Curly and Curly's wife. So the first character we'll talk about is Curly. Curly is our principal antagonist. He's, I don't want to say two-dimensional. He's not two-dimensional, but he's, he's definitely the bad guy. There's not much, if anything, redeeming about him, and we don't get too deep into his character. What we do know is this. His introduction here uh, gives us some interesting points. Uh, he's described as brown of face, brown eyes, head of tightly curled hair. Notice that he's one of the few characters where we don't get uh, that he is wearing practical clothing. He is wearing high-heeled boots. And one of the things that Steinbeck is pointing out is that uh, he's he's short, essentially, and he's trying to overcompensate with the high-heeled boots. Um, we also notice that he's only wearing a single work glove. And uh, a little later on, we find out that the rumor is that he's wearing the single work glove because it's filled with Vaseline in order to keep his hand soft for his wife. Uh, he's bragged about this, apparently, and, you know, obviously he wants people to, to know, look what I've got, look what I can touch, that kind of thing. So he's just creepy all around, without a, without a doubt. And then we get this description right here. Of him, his arms gradually bent to the elbows and his hands closed into fists. He stiffened and went into a slight crouch. His glance was at once calculating and pugnacious. He's spoiling for a fight. Uh, and we, we see here why. Uh, this is really important, this particular section. Um, Curly jumps a big guy and licks him. Everybody says what a game guy Curly is. And suppose he does the same thing and gets licked. Then everybody says the big guy ought to pick on somebody his own size. Essentially, Curly only picks fights that he can win. And not literally win. Sometimes he gets beaten up. But regardless, he is always the guy who comes out sympathetic. He picks fights with bigger guys. If he beats them up, it's like, wow, this little guy beat this big guy up. He must be pretty powerful. And if he loses, then, oh, what's the big guy doing picking on the little guy? So Curly only only fights when he knows that he can get something out of it. This guy is calculating. He's he, There's nothing good or nice about him. And then we get his wife, and his wife is your typical uh, gold digger. Uh, she just hasn't gotten very far. Uh, remember, this is the the uh, Depression era, so there aren't a lot of wealthy people to you know to gold dig, if you will. So uh, Curly, who's the son of a successful farm hand, uh, farm owner, ranch owner. Uh, is as good as she can get. But you'll notice that she's not really all that dedicated to Curly. Uh, she, in this whole section, she's flirting with everybody that she comes in contact with. Uh, we see here uh, this description of her. Uh, she had a full, uh, she had full rouged lips and wide spaced eyes, heavily made up. Her fingernails were red. Her hair hung in little rolled clusters like sausages. Uh, she wore a cotton house dress and red mules. Okay, so everything about her is impractical. Uh, everybody else, if you notice, is wearing practical clothing for a ranch. She is dressed, uh, well, I won't say dressed to the nines, but she's dressed up, uh, especially in comparison uh, with uh, everyone else. And she says, I'm looking for Curly. She's not looking for Curly. She's looking for guys uh, to see if there's anybody better than, than Curly. And we get that her voice is a nasal, brittle quality. Uh, there's nothing nice or good about her, essentially. Uh, she's pretty, but but uh, she's not conveyed as a good person here. Um, and you'll notice that she's not given a name. She's the only character in the entire story who doesn't have a name, and she's the only female character in the entire story. Uh, it's it's a little odd, and, and we'll get more into that as we get into the book. But just remember, she's as separate as candy is or frankly as anybody is in the text everybody in this text is isolated in some way but then we also get this and again a little bit of foreshadowing lenny's eyes moved down over her body and though she did not seem to be looking at lenny she brittled a little 
uh, looking at her fingernails. So she senses that Lenny's looking at her. Uh, essentially, again, he doesn't directly state it, but Lenny, uh, for all his kind of childlike qualities, is not a child. And he definitely has the impulses of a grown man. And he's clearly got sexual impulses. And this is a beautiful woman. But he doesn't have the... Um, adultness, if you will, to be able to control himself. And so this is, of course, a disturbing uh, development that will, of course, uh, be uh, developed over the rest of the story. All right. So what do we need to know from this? Our uh, summation is this. Curly is the antagonist. He's utterly insecure and he overcompensates. He only picks fights he can win. And he's kind of a nasty guy. Uh, Curly's wife is a gold digger who hasn't gotten very far, and please note that she is the only character without a name. And she does draw very uh, marked attention to the idea that everybody here seems to be isolated in one way or another. And there is the work cited.